we've noticed this even with listening to calls, like we'd listen to probably 30, 40,000 calls a month, right through our system. So the main thing I immediately noticed was um, there is no process in terms of how to talk to patients. And I imagine there probably isn't a process for anything internal either, right? So depending on which receptionist answers the phone, they all have a very different way of doing things, right? That they don't correlate. And even with the same person, depending on how they got up that morning, <laughs> Uh, you know, one day they, they, you know, if a patient asks us a certain question, they'll say one thing. And the next day we hear them saying something completely different. And, you know, my, my thinking was like this, I'm sure isn't uh, isolated just to the phone. I pretty sure this is exactly what happens like down the line as well from how do we greet the patient? Um, how do you set up the room? How do you present treatment? How do you check them out? Uh, it's all there's there's so many so much variance so many ups and downs there and I think that what, what causes a lot of uh, instability with the performance of the business is that there, there there is no real consistency there is no desk file when people often get sort of thrown into the situation you know here's the desk here's your chair here's your computer go right and dentists hire people because oh, this person knows Able Dent or they know uh, Open Dental or whatever software they're using. I'm, I'm busy, just, just go, right? And as you mentioned, I mean, if it's a hygienist, if an assistant, it's hard, it's hard to find them these days, right? So, uh, but not for front desk staff. I mean, uh, hypothetically, you could take somebody that, you know, worked in a restaurant and you can teach them how to do the job, right? If, if you have the right system there. Um, and it really isn't all that complicated. It's not, it's not a two-year program to teach somebody to talk to patients who are looking to book an appointment. Um, but it's that sort of, uh, it, I think it's something that dentists don't quite understand uh, because they haven't worked in, you know, much larger businesses where they see that like, you can't have everyone doing it different ways where one person says one thing, one person says, it. like, there's a common set of questions and, and situations that will come up in this business daily or weekly, we need to systemize how we deal with them so that no matter who you get, uh, whether it's Jenny or Joanne, we're all doing it the same way. And uh, many dentists, I think when, when they see that, they don't realize how powerful that can be. They just think, yeah, that, that, that sounds good. But what about the SEO? It's like, no, you don't understand. That piece of it can double your business, just that small piece. Yeah. The inconsistency will kill any business. You know, as you said that, you know, if, if one person is doing things one way, it's, it, it's an indication that the whole business is not systemized. So it's like, if you go into a restaurant and the bathroom is filthy, well, what does the kitchen look like? Right. That's the first thing you think of, like if this is their standard, right. And so, you know, if you use a restaurant example. Like if you have a restaurant you like to go to, I, I had a, a restaurant I'd love to go to here locally and it's, it's since closed. But when we were going there, it was like, if the owner's there, the food is excellent, like best in town. If the owner's not there, then it's hit or miss. So do I refer my friends from out of town to the restaurant? Well, I don't know. It depends who they get, right? So it's the same kind of thing. It's like, if, well, if this person answers the phone, everything's great. If this person does, then all bets are off. Well, you can't have that. If you look at Ritz Carlton as an example, first year employee at any level, doesn't matter what their job is, even if they are just literally like, you know, turning rooms over. 200 hours of training is put into that person. Okay. So there has, there's one way to do everything and that's it. There's not five different ways. There's not the way you feel like, you know, whether you had your coffee or not, it's, this is the way we do this, but you're right. People don't know that they don't see that because we go through dental school. You, you know, you start your business and then, well, it's my way because it's my business. Well, that's great. But if you want to actually get the result, like it doesn't take months to train someone on the phone. It takes two days, two days to teach them how to run the phone process properly to get to an appointment 90% of the times. And not at all costs, but to go through a proper process, get some good information from the patient, build rapport and get an appointment where there's an appointment to be got. Very systematic, very simple. And what you'll find, and you probably found this on, on your calls, is that the longer the call takes, the less likely they are to book an appointment. Oh, absolutely. Out, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If they're in eight, nine minutes with this person, they're just now unselling them 
on yeah they, they go in circles because they they try to explain so much almost like let me show you how smart i am i'm gonna you know they, they try to diagnose treatment over the phone and then by the end of that call that patient is more confused than when they first called and they don't book that's right, right. That's right. Yeah. You're answering questions they didn't ask and so then to go back to training like yeah if you hire someone because they know your dental software that's that's great but if they're not a fit and they don't have the cognitive ability and the personality to do that job don't hire them like we have been through in our in that in the office alone i know twice we flipped our entire front desk everybody gone and this is you know way back but it's not hard to fix like if you have a, a, a process where you can train people. So if you spent that little bit of time to build a process to train the next person. So if I have a really great team member doing something, I do this, we do this in elite practice too, who is the best person at this that we've had, that person's primary role is not to keep doing what they're doing, is to create a process to train the next one of them. Yeah, we do the exact same thing. And right. it's it's such a key to why we were able to scale is exactly it. It's like, because the person, if they're really good, they're going to want progression. They're not going to want to sit and be a cog in a machine, right? So uh, yeah. it's more interesting to them to say, you know, I, I for example, uh, in, in our account manager, so we I had spent quite a bit of time training this person, but then she was able to train the next person in about a fifth of the time. And then, you know, like, after, and then it just goes down and it becomes easier because each time they leave behind a system, a desk file, a process, a set of uh, sort of instructions of like, right. here's how you're going to do a better job than I have done. And then the next person does that. But that's really missing in dentistry. Um, one, nothing is written down. Part of it, I mean, it, there is a lot of distractions. There is a lot of chaos, um, you know, but yeah, if they find a really good person, it doesn't, there's no longevity in terms of if that person leaves, they've lost everything. There's nothing left behind. There's no process left behind it. They weren't even thinking about anything like that. 